we'll get started. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, both now and ever, into the age of all ages, amen. Welcome again um, to our Zoom sermons. Um, <clears throat> uh, I know, uh, unfortunately, um, not everyone can attend the Divine Liturgy uh, on a given Sunday, but at least we encourage you, as we've said before, to read some of the readings, especially if you can, the gospel and, and the Pauline epistle and, the, and as many of the readings as you can, just so that you feel the presence of God and the blessing of the Lord's day in your life and in your family. Um, so as custom, we try to comment a little bit about the gospel. Um, and uh, today is a gospel that's pretty familiar to a lot of us, um, because not only do we um, read about it every uh, year on, on this day. Today is the third Sunday of Abib, but also um, several times um, uh, a year and every day. Um, so today is the gospel of blessing. Um, and as um, you see, we read the, the uh, Um, sorry, I think there's something in the middle of the screen. Someone is telling me. Sorry. Hopefully that's better. <laughs> the crayons, for some reason, always pop up on my thing. <laughs> so anyway, um, the the gospel uh, today today is the third Sunday of Abib, but we also read it if if we can the second Sunday yeah. of Amshir, depending on when the Lent comes, um, and uh, then. If there's a fifth Sunday of the month, we also read the Gospel of Blessing because we say that the Lord has blessed us with an extra Sunday this month. Um, and then every ninth hour of the day in the Agbeya, the Book of Hours, we pray um, from the Gospel uh, according to St. Luke chapter 9. So um, <clears throat> you should be familiar with it. And so today, um, we're, as we know from all these Gospels, the miracle was performed two times, not just once, and it's, but it's one of the few uh, miracles that was repeated by all four evangelists. Um, St. John the Beloved, um, because he wrote his gospel late, later than the, the first three, um, he didn't repeat a lot of the things that were uh, mentioned in the first three gospels, unless there was something very important he wanted to reiterate and to stress and to, um, to, to show. Um, so usually when we find them in all four, like for example, in Passion Week, um, the, the events of the Passion, of the Crucifixion, of the Burial, of the Resurrection, those are mentioned in all four because that's the, the um, crux of the gospel, right? Um, and um, that's why in Palm Sunday and Passion Week, we read from four Gospels, <laughs> especially when um, like we get to Holy Friday. So um, uh, just for your information, the Gospel where the Lord blesses the multitudes, it, as we said, it happened twice, right? Um, the first time where, he, where there's 5,000 men and women and children, but we don't know exactly how many of those. The, the families were only counted according to the men back then. Um, and then, uh, or the, the, the head of the family, and there were five loaves and two fish and 12 baskets left over. Um, and you could see, find this in all four Gospels. The second time around, only St. Matthew and St. Mark describe, um, but there were 4,000 men, seven loaves and a few fish, and seven baskets left over. Um, and so even when the Lord um, comments with his disciples, he mentions both Gospels. Some people say, oh, maybe they just miscounted. But no, he even asked them what happened in, in both of these occurrences. So that's even further proof that this um, that the Lord did this more th than one time. Okay, um, But today, I won't go too much into the Gospel. We say, that, like we said, this is the Gospel of blessings. But instead of looking at the, the blessing itself, I thought maybe we can contemplate a little bit more on well, what happened right before. Um, if I want to be blessed in my life or in my family or in my work or in my service, um, what are some things I need to take, uh, uh, be aware of beforehand so I can at least ensure as best as I can 
that God will be with me and bless us. Um, so um, let's just focus on the first two verses uh, of today, right? Um, <clears throat> and, and the apostles, when they had returned, told that him all that they had done. Then he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place belonging to the city of called Bethsaida. But when the multitude knew it, they followed him and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God <clears throat> and healed those who were in need of healing. Um, so, um, like I said, what can I do? Um, of course, God is uh, the source of all blessing and all grace. And he determines who gets what and who needs what. But oftentimes, I can do my part by preparing the way to receive God's blessing, right? Um, so how do I feel his presence more, especially in my prayer, in my reading, in uh, attending the divine liturgy? Um, in How do I feel his blessing more in my family, in my work, in, in my life in general? Um, that's often a common question. And um, there's often a similar answer. So when we read uh, these few verses, <clears throat> um, uh, we see what transpires just before he blesses them. Um, so the first thing we say, we'll take it like part by part. So the first part, he says, and when the apostles had returned, well, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Actually, it's quite important. Like, so as you know, last month, we spoke, or the church theme was related to the Holy Spirit. This month, the theme is the Holy Apostles. Um, and the first week, which was two weeks ago, two Sundays ago, we see the Lord sending out the disciples. And actually, if you look in the gospel, according to St. Luke, which we read from today, um, chapter 9, he sends out the apostles. And then they return. And then he blesses the five loaves and two fish. And then he sends out the 70. So it gets a little bit confusing. Did he send them out more than once? Yes. But he sent, according to St. Luke, he sent out the 12 and then they returned. And then he stayed with them a while and performed this miracle according to St. Luke. And then in the next chapter, he sends out the 70. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the Lord sent out the disciples many, uh, more than once. Right. And the final sending out, and, and the perfection of that was after Pentecost. Um, so anyway, um, the disciples, and so when it says they had returned, they returned from their service. They returned from going out. Um, if you read just a few more verses or the beginning of chapter nine of St. Luke will describe uh, as he, similar to what we read two Sundays ago. Um, <clears throat> so what happens after this? After you have a hard day's work, after you, um, uh, a long day, we need to return to God. We should start the day with God, but we also return to him. Um, and even after a period of, of sinning, because we, there, we can't live one day, unfortunately, without sin, we have to return to God. And the fathers tell us it's never too late to return. Um, and this, there's a nice verse in the book of Isaiah where he says, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. So our life was not designed by God to always be busy, 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 uh, go to sleep, wake up, busy, busy, busy. Um, yes, we're supposed to be busy and to um, uh, redeem the time. But there always has to be a point, um, or even a, if it's only a few minutes in our life, where we return to, to the quiet place with God. Um, and so uh, uh, the Lord had um, a very busy and successful service, and the apostles also had a very busy and successful service, but the Lord um, in the gospel shows that we have to spend time um, with God. Um, <clears throat> and I won't speak too much about all of this, but what do we do in that time? The, the first or one of the first things we do is we just uh, release everything that we have inside um, to our Father. And just like when we have a long day, we want to spend it with our beloved ones and um, share with them 
our day. And sometimes there's a, there's a psychological or there's a healthy uh, benefit to releasing this and sharing our, our life with those who we love. How about God? Um, and not only this, but there is a healing part in, in doing this. The person who has no one to talk to, no one to vent to, no one to release this is usually very uh, stressed and it weighs down on them. Um, so the first person we should do this with um, is God. Um, and, and telling him everything, right? And this happens usually in the secret place, like um, the Lord says in the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 6, which we read during the Lent. It says, but when you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, Pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. So um, as we speak with the Lord uh, about our life and ourselves, it helps us process it and it helps us unite with him and to let go of the problem, right? So, um, but that's not the only thing what we do. You know, sometimes if you have a friend and you just go to them and vent, 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 there's going to come a period in time where like, what kind of friendship is this? <laughs> um, I, I just hear a lot of negativity and there's no benefit from me, even if I love the person, but it's weighing down on me, right? So of course, nothing weighs down on God too much, but sometimes we don't even feel the relationship if, if that's all we do. Right. Um, so but even before we do this, we have to go aside. We have to be one on one with the Lord. Um, and this is what we will talk today about, uh, about solitude and silence. Um, and these are two characteristics of what we call the quiet time, because this is what gives place to God in our life. In order for God to, to have a place in my life, in my heart, I have to make room. I have to uh, create a space. How do you create that space? With silence and solitude. So when the, when the disciples came back after their service to God and they told him, look, all these things happened. He said, hold on a second. Let's go into the quiet place. Um, and so for God to do work inside of us, um, he ha we have to spend time with him, even if it's only a few minutes uh, a day. And this training is difficult. It's, it's not easy, especially with the hustle and bustle and the busyness of the world and social media and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's hard to focus on that time. Um, and nowadays in the quarantine, we have a lot of opportunity and fewer excuses, um, but it's, it's still difficult if it's, if it's not a priority in our life, or we don't make it a priority. Um, and again, as we'll see at the end, to get started, it doesn't take much. But when you, when you start it, you notice a big impact in your life, in your heart, in your thoughts, in your peace, in your joy. Um, and then you want to do this even more often. So the first thing to do is realize you don't have to do anything. <laughs> don't try hard to make anything happen, um, but just calm yourself down. Um, and so um, in solitude and silence, we're learning to stop. Like we have to put on the brakes and to stop doing things. Even in our spiritual life, there has to be a period of time where we're, like, we're not like, um, saying, okay, what do I have to do now? Um, in the beginning, we just have to just kind of like calm down a little bit. <laughs> um, and uh, this is what it says in the Psalms, be still and then know that I am God. Um, okay, so, um, so he took them and went aside privately and the place was deserted, um, which is a good thing. Uh, and the Lord took his disciples with him into a deserted place often. And he himself went to a deserted place often. Um, and before we get to meditation and contemplation, like his grace, Bishop Ioannis of blessed memory, he says, I can never see God in his glory unless I ascend the mountain of transfiguration. See why I selected this verse, but uh, quote. But then he says, after I leave the world at my back, even temporarily, and rise up on the mountain of meditation. So 
we have to leave the world in a sense so that we can come to God. This can happen on a retreat, but it can, it can happen in our room, in our house, in my mind and my heart. Um, and again, it takes practice to get to this point. And so the first thing we'll talk about is solitude. We have to be alone with God. Um, and St. Isaac the Syrian, he, he says, a man who loves conversation, or woman who loves conversation with Christ, loves to be alone. That doesn't mean you have to be a loner. <laughs> you have to be by yourself all the time. But even a young child, we have to train them in the way of spending quiet time. Sometimes we send them to their rooms when, <laughs> when they're punished, right? Um, but part of the idea is for them to be alone so that they can uh, spend time with God. It shouldn't be a punishment. Um, but, you know, as parents, we say, okay, you have to think about what you did, right? But the other part of it is, you know, cal calm down, focus, let the waters settle. Yeah, I, I think I mentioned this before, but in the Desert Fathers, there's a nice story of, uh, of an elder monk who's training the younger, and um, he, he tells them to throw a rock in the water. He says, what do you see? I don't see anything. Um, there's, there's a lot of waves and ripples. Um, I, I can't see anything. So, okay, wait. So waited a few seconds. And what happened? The water became very still and he was able to see himself clearly after that. So we see more things about ourselves, about God, about our life, about eternity, um, uh, about what we're doing wrong or what we need to start doing when we um, are alone uh, with God. Okay, um, and, and there's a nice uh, uh, quote here from um, uh, a book called The Way of the Heart. It's a little lengthy, but I tried to summarize a little bit. He says, <clears throat> um, solitude is not private um, therapeutic place. Uh, rather, he says, it's a place of transformation. It's a place of conversion. The place where the old self dies and the new self is born. Um, and he says, in solitude, I get rid of my scaffolding, the things that, you know, separate me. Um, no friends to talk with, no telephone calls to make, no meetings to attend, no texts to respond to, um, no music to entertain, no books to distract, just me. Um, just me, a vulnerable, weak, sinful, deprived, broken, I mean, nothing. So solitude has to try to kind of get us to this place where like, okay, I, I don't have anything. And it's uncomfortable at first, but there is a purpose behind it, okay? And it says, and it is this nothingness that I have to face in my solitude, a nothingness so dreadful that everything in me wants to run to my friends. You know, have you ever tried putting down your phone um, for, for a day or two? Like, there's a restlessness that happens, right? Um, I want to check this. I want to talk about this, right? Um, but there has to be, a time where we're like, no, I have to face the idea that uh, I need to be alone with myself, with God. Um, and I can't just run every time I feel bored or lonely, or I need to talk, like, I can't just depend on something else or someone else. Sometimes I have to depend uh, on God. Um, <clears throat> so then he continues by saying, that's not all. As soon as I um, uh, decide to stay in my solitude, confusing ideas, disturbing images, fantasies, weird associations jump out about in my mind like monkeys in a banana tree. Like, so as soon as I say, okay, fine, I will have quiet time. What happens? Oh, you remember, you know, the thing that you were supposed to do, you know, and um, you get distracted by this and you have a new idea about this. That's, that's a temptation of the thought. And that's why and who's, who is kind of inserting and whispering these? Of course, the devil, because he doesn't want us to, to benefit from this time. Um, so we have, and sometimes even in liturgy, it happens. Um, why? Because, you know, uh, we, we're not used to just being still and, and know God. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the devil is playing, but he enjoys it when we get distracted in, in the time of being close to God. But then he says the wisdom of the desert or the monks and the nuns is that the confrontation with our own frightening nothingness 
forces us to surrender ourselves totally and unconditionally to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so this uncomfortable feeling when we are alone with God, if we persist in it, if we push ourselves, we find like, okay, fine, I, I have to just leave everything uh, to my Lord. Um, <clears throat> so it's uncomfortable at first, but later on it becomes joyful. Um, so that's the first part, solitude, being alone with God. And the other thing is not speaking for a period of time, silence. Um, and St. John of the Ladder, um, the Ladder of Ascent, he says, uh, intelligent silence is the mother of prayer. So with our minds, okay, I have to quiet my, uh, quiet my voice or my mind, quiet my voice that my mind may speak and quiet my mind that my heart may speak and quiet my heart that God may speak. I think we mentioned this before. Um, <clears throat> so, so this is the way that I get to hear God's voice. I have to stop talking <laughs> and I have to stop even sometimes thinking. Why? Because I, I'm waiting to receive the blessing. So like in the, the gospel of today, the disciples are running, looking for food. Oh, we don't have anything. Just, just this, okay, sit down, organize the people, wait so that I can do something with, with these five loaves and two fish. Um, so there has to be a period in my life where I just wait and see the glory of God um, and hear the voice of God. Um, as St. John also says, the ear of the solitary, the one who is alone with God, will hear wonders from God. Um, <clears throat> and so, again, it takes practice. Sometimes I can silence my voice, but I can't silence my thoughts. And the more I push myself in this quiet time, the more I'm, I'm comfortable with making the waters of my thoughts you know, subside um, and quiet down. And then I can hear the voice of God. It's hard to hear when, you know, a hundred or even three people are talking to you at once. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't hear anything. You just, uh, you know, sometimes when the kids do this, you can't, you can't even focus. It's like one at a time, <laughs> right? And, and sometimes the same thing with God. Like we're listening to all these things and thinking about all these things. And the Lord is trying to speak softly to us. Um, so we need this time. Uh, the, also, St. Isaac the Syrian says, a silent man, someone who, who spends time in silence with God, interprets God's mysteries. But the person who talks a lot, the garrulous man, is distant from his creator. So uh, again, the purpose of silence and solitude is to be able to see and to hear God. Um, so. Uh, almost uh, finish here. Um, so what happened after this? He received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. So after he sat with the disciples, the multitude came, right? And he welcomed them. And then he began to speak to them uh, about the kingdom of God. So once we silence ourselves and our hearts and our minds, right? We're not going to be too... Um, uh, busy or preoccupied with the worldly things, but we're more ready to hear, like sometimes we just want God to help us with this problem or to um, uh, show me what to do, right? But the ultimate goal of my time with God and my time on this earth is attain the kingdom. And we forget that a lot. But when we quiet ourselves down, then we realize, oh yeah, yeah, this is the goal, right? So when the Lord um, receive them. What did he speak to them about? The kingdom of God. Um, and so, um, again, we've spoken about this before, right? Um, to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, um, <clears throat> and all these things shall be added to you. Um, so that's just, this quiet time helps put things back in focus um, towards Christ and the king and his kingdom, right? Um, and that should be our main focus. And the more we spend in time with God, the more we focus, refocus on this. If we go days and weeks and, and years without, without this focus, then we could be very far uh, in our life um, from, from preparing ourselves for the kingdom. Um, and that's, that's a scary thought. 
Um, so that's why these few little um, minutes in our life um, can, can change us uh, dramatically. Okay, um, just one last quote that I thought was very nice from St. Anthony uh, the Great in, in one of his letters. Um, he says, you have to become the Shoria. <laughs> he says, you have to become a censor. Um, because oftentimes the thing that we're struggling most in the, this quiet time for, to receive blessings is our thoughts. So he says, um, turn this body that you're clothed in now into a censor how, in which you burn all of your evil thoughts and, and musings. Raise them up before the Lord that he may raise your hearts to him. I like that part. And he says, ask him with all the might you possess in your minds to bring down his immaterial fire from on high to consume all that is found in the censer and purify it. So if I have uh, bad thoughts, if I have anger or restlessness or judgment or frustration or depression, or whatever, I throw it into this fire and say, God, you are the fire. Burn all this um, distraction from me. Um, and then you will see the new man coming out as water from the, just like the baby that comes out of the baptism font, we, be, we become renewed with, with this um, burning of the, the evil in, inside of us. Um, again, this happens also not just from our thoughts, but it happens from the, mis the sacraments, from, from the communion. Um, and after we confess, like everything is burned. Um, everything bad, <laughs> everything bad is, is burned and we, we become white inside and out. Um, so um, where do we start from all of this? Um, or how to continue, I guess you can say, it just needs a few minutes to be alone with yourself and God and a few seconds not to say anything. Um, so what do I mean by that? Okay, we spend the first part of our quiet time in silence, um, and then a few more minutes, you know, alone with God, reading scripture, praying, um, thinking about the kingdom, um, thinking about our life in general, or the sins, like, don't worry about having a, a plan, just make sure you plan to do this a few minutes each day, or even each, each month, like, once you start, you're not going to want to stop. So it's always best to do it, like especially before you confess, before you take communion. So before you confess, maybe every month or so, right? You should do this. Every night, maybe before you take communion the next day, it's good to, to prepare yourself for this blessing, right? Um, can you imagine if someone came late to this multitude um, and they saw everyone eating? It was like, oh, there's a party. It's like, no, you don't understand what happened beforehand. This is a great blessing. Uh, we heard um, amazing things from him. And then he healed us. And then he provided, you know, a multitude of food from, from a few um, leftovers, right? And even there's leftovers. <laughs> um, so sometimes we approach the communion in that way. Like, maybe not now, thank God, because, you know, uh, the communion is limited to, to many of us now and we have to wait to attend the divine liturgy but it's it's kind of like reminding us of the, the great blessing that is when we actually receive um or even before reading the holy bible or before doing your spiritual exercises a few minutes seconds of silence um uh, are a tremendous um positive impact um on what we're the spiritual thing that we're going to be doing um so that's basically um, a, a summary of, of how we should uh, prepare our hearts and minds for the blessing that we are to receive from God so that he may bless us 30, 60, 100 fold um, in our life, in our service, in our family, um, uh, until we experience a taste of the kingdom here and we uh, receive the fullness of the kingdom um, in, in eternal life. And glory be to him now and forever and to the age will ages. Amen. Uh, any questions? Uh, sorry, I think I kind of muted everyone for the recordings. But let me just do a few announcements um, before I um, receive the questions. Um, as, as you know, we kind of um, are adjusting to the ever-changing uh, directives <laughs> uh, by, by, because of the safety needs. 
of, of our people. Um, so instead of, uh, thank God we still are praying um, uh, at uh, our, our church, but we're trying to have the open air uh, liturgies as best as we can. Um, many of you, a few of you already attended this. Um, and so if, if you like to uh, attend the Divine Liturgy in August, um, go to the email, God willing, we'll send it out tomorrow. Um, and, and if you don't, you're not on the list, uh, let me or Father Daniel, or you could just email uh, Holy Transfiguration uh, COC, Coptic Orthodox Church at Gmail. Um, and um, just, um, you'll, you'll be put on as soon um, as, as we can arrange for that. Um, thank you for, for uh, accommodating uh, all of the requirements that we're putting. Um, and we're doing this again for everyone's safety um, and uh, seeing it in the news more and more of people unfortunately getting um, affected by, by this pandemic. Um, and if you have, as we said before, if you tested positive, just let us know, um, especially if you've attended a, a service recently, just so we can notify um, uh, others and, and be responsible, we will try to make it as anonymous as possible. Um, and if you've been exposed to anyone um, who tested positive, um, please just refrain from attending for a couple of weeks or if you've, until you've um, uh, tested negatively twice. Again, we're just doing this uh, to, to be um, uh, careful. Um, and then uh, as we're trying to do just to keep you updated with the donation uh, campaign, thank God, um, we're getting close to finishing the construction documents. Um, it's the last step, like we said, before breaking ground. Um, as long as we have uh, the, enough funds, as long as God blesses us with, with the, the needs to, to start. Um, as we said before, we need about, God willing, uh, our goal is about a million um, before we can break ground. We're more than halfway there, thank God. Um, and if we meet our goal for this campaign, we'll be three quarters of the way uh, there. Um, <clears throat> so we'll try to keep updating you on this thing. Thankfully, we do have a donation match where everything. So if you're planning to, to, to give this year, it would be an opportune time um, in, the, in the coming months so that that could be duplicated. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know if we've mentioned this before, but we, we were hoping to do this also through the Facebook campaign last year. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of it wasn't doubled. Um, I don't know what happened with um, on their side, but at least we can assure <laughs> for this campaign, it will be uh, doubled. Um, uh, that's all the main announcements. Don't forget the Sunday school um, that will start, God willing, at 1130. Um, and the rest of the announcements, um, if, uh, if I've forgotten any, um, Mabuna, you can let me know. Um, and uh, are there any uh, questions from anyone? Let me see if I can, sorry. Um, no, so far I don't see any questions. Let me give you, yeah, no questions. Okay, thank you everyone for attending um, and God willing, we'll see you uh, in person soon. And hopefully um, we can uh, all get together soon, as soon as it is safe. God be with you and protect you. Uh, glory be to God, now and from today. Bye everyone.